What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. I'm just, um, <laughs> I've made a proper mess. Look, all that lot, <laughs> just from taking out these corners. Take a little bit of metal, shove it through a mill, and you turn it into an awful lot of metal. <laughs> Some people will keep all that lot for a future idea. I don't understand the logic behind that, but there you go. So anyway, I haven't showed you this bit just because it's exactly the same as what I did on the underside on that bit there. But um, you can see we're starting to get a bit of shape into it. So this is now 25 mil each side and it is because I used micrometers on it and it is 25 mil. Um, so now all I've got to do is set this up on that tilty table jobby like that and take these corners off and start making it look like a set of yolks. It is a bit oily though. He's peeing everywhere today. Actually, I'm fed up with cleaning this out all the time. I've got an old grinding apron. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is just cut it off and split it down the middle. I can stick that over the bed. I can still get to everything, but it's just going to mean tips and everything don't go in here. And when I want to clear it, I'll just pick that up, oik it in the bucket, and we're good to go again. So I reckon that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, where's my scissors? About there, that'll do. <laughs> right then, I'm definitely getting quicker at setting stuff up. I definitely am. Um, today is Tuesday, so I've already had like, I don't know, a couple of hours on this so far today. Um, but uh, yesterday being Monday, that was the day my replacement turned up and I didn't have just one replacement to train, I got two. <laughs> and I don't care. The boss asked me today, how are they doing? It's like, yeah, brilliant, awesome. They could do it with their eyes shut. I think one of them is, but no, they're great. <laughs> right, let's um, have this corner off and we can see how we go. I can power feed this as well, can't I? I do. Speeds. There we go. It is cool. Rather than faffing about trying to follow this line, just indicate off that. Speed things up no end. And I'm hoping these are going to speed up the cleaning as well. We shall see. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, he's all done and looking lovely. So it's on to the next bit, and this bit I've got some concerns about. <laughs> this was going to be the next step. So essentially putting this angle on it here. Um, so, you know, on the bike, this is the bit that's facing you, you know, towards the back of the bike. And it's just cutting this angle. I know what the angle is supposed to be. I've measured it all in CAD. So, you know, that's all good and crusty. However, when I was doing these slopey bits down here, the first time round, I set it up um, using a digital protractor, which is pretty bloody accurate, really. I had a reference off the table. I zeroed it out properly and everything else, but I still came up a little bit off. And the worry that I've got is if I put these slopes in here first, and then I bore the holes for the forks to go through, if those angles are even a tiny bit off, you're gonna notice, because this, this edge round here, that's five mil on the stock um, yokes, and that's what I'm going for here. But if that angle's wrong, and this ends up being four mil or six mil or something, that hole isn't gonna be central to that radius, and you're gonna notice it. You're gonna see it. And I don't want that. So, we might be switching these around. Um, I'm probably going to bore these holes next. And then to locate them on the turntable to do this outside radius and get all that nice and neat, I will have to make up another sort of centralising plug for the turntable, which is, um, you know, the same size as the fork tube itself. But it's just that way. I could blue the top. I could draw these lines in using this thing. You know, digital angle finder jobby thing. And that way I could, I've just got a visual reference to know that when I set it up on the turntable to make this cut, that I've got it right and I'm not going to overstep it or anything. And that this distance here is going to be the same as that distance there, as is this one here, because it will be central on the turntable. So I think I'm going to switch these two around. I'm putting big holes in it next. <laughs> right. Right, well, whilst I'm... Um pulling all this apart and getting it ready for the next bit. Word about Fusion 360, because I have been going on about it. I think it's brilliant. It is really, really good. It's dead easy to use and everything else. Um, when I downloaded it, it was free for home use. As long as you weren't commercial or using it for you know business reasons or anything else, it was free for use. Um, and I have been using it and I have been doing stuff as you know. However, I went to use it the other day just to check a couple of bits and bobs. And it came up saying expired. Why well, can something that's free expire? There wasn't any mention of it being like a trial for so many days or something like that. And I've had it for quite a while, but I think what they've done is they've changed their, I think, I don't know, but I think they've changed their terms of conditions of use and all that sort of stuff. Because apparently now when you go to the free download link, you have to put your credit card details in and all that sort of stuff. Thing is, it is like, it is not cheap. It is not cheap. Um, you know, about a grand a year subscription, something like that. Um, I ain't got that sort of money, so I'm not using it anymore. <laughs> I mean, luckily, I've got all the drawings out to do this. Um, pretty much to the end. Oh, Mr. Man in his van again. Um, but uh, I didn't get all of it. So some of this we're going to have to sort of figure out. I've been grabbing about for free CAD software. And there's another one which I've just downloaded. But I haven't had a chance to play about with yet. Which is Autodesk 123 Design. Or 123D Design or something. Come on. Come out. You went in. It's because you're painted, isn't it? Um... So I'm going to give that a bash and see what it's like. But it comes up in the top 10 freebie jobbies. So, you know, we'll give that a whirl and see what that's like. That has come out brilliant. That has come out very nice. Right then.
Oh, you. Bell end. <laughs> <clears throat> I need to centralise that hole, <laughs> which means I need to use my edge finder, which means I need the collet chucked back in there with the collet and the edge finder in it. Not a boring head just yet. You numpty. <laughs> Maybe set up wouldn't take so long if I actually thought about it and knew what I was doing before I started doing stuff. Do you reckon? Oh, just giving him another squirt of oil in his head. <laughs> um, the top bearing that sits up here isn't fed by the main oiling system. Um, it's above where the feed pipe is, so you have to squirt oil in this this uh, nipple up the top there just to get oil to the top bearing. The thing is, I don't know how often I'm supposed to be doing it. Um, how long do you want a bearing to be running at anything up to 1500 RPM without any fresh oil getting to it? You know, I don't want it getting hot and trashing the bearing or anything. So he's getting a squirt in there, sort of, you know, a couple of squirts with a high pressure um, oil gun. A um, couple of squirts every 15 minutes of use. I don't know if that's right or not. If anybody does know how often I'm supposed to do it, drop a comment. Because um, I really don't want to trash my bearings in the top there. Um, and also, I've been boring out stuff wrong. <laughs> Something else to add to the list. <laughs> Brett was in here yesterday. And the way that he was taught on his apprenticeship is that you bore the hole out. And when you get into your final dimension... You, you bore it out, stop it, retract the tool, it will leave a line up your bore. And then you don't change any of the settings or anything, you just bore it again. And you probably do like three or four bores like that, because there is going to be a tiny amount of flex in the tool. Tiny amount. But just by doing like three or four, you know, runs through it, um, you know that the, the boring bar has centralised itself and your hole is on size and it's not taking off any more material, that sort of stuff. Um, and I think that line that you leave is supposed to disappear. I think. I didn't ask him that bit, but that would make sense, wouldn't it? What I've been doing is kept it running and just retracted the tool. There is, there is an angle to this. It's not much of one, but apparently if you do that, then the tool's just rubbing. It's not really cutting as it's designed to when it goes down. So, something else I've learned today, eh? <laughs> right, let's make this hole a bit bigger. Where do you need to be? Right, so up to this point, I've just been using the guesstimators to get the hole opened up, you know, somewhere near. I've stopped like a couple of mils short, according to that, and that is literally just putting the faces across the hole. There's nothing accurate about it at all. Uh, I've just took a reading with the telescope in bore gauge and measured it on micrometers, and we are currently at 40, 42, 6, 42.64 uh, mil. So we've still got a little ways to go, but what I've been doing is uh, winding the tool down to bore a hole, stopping it, and then pulling the tool out like what you're supposed to do. And I'll get a picture of this, but it does leave a little line 
down the side of the bore. Now, the picture I'm going to show you, I've been down that hole four times. <laughs> I didn't open it up anymore. I've just kept on going down it four times. And I've still got the faintest little line, but there is a line there. Um, so there, there is obviously some sort of, you know, tool deflection going. But now I've got a measurement. There's a little dial on it that you wind it out. And obviously that's how much it's taking off. Now that's how much you're actually taking off. So, you know, double that because you're taking it off both sides. But that gives me an idea of how to get down to it. I'm going for a 0.1 fit on this. So if the forks is 45 mil, I'm going for 45.1. Because um, I want them as snug in there as I can get them. So when you actually clamp it up using the screw, you know, you, you're not deflecting this much at all for it to grip. I want it to be like a really nice, well, snug fit, basically. <laughs> so, um, what I will do is take another, well, I'm doing it in half mil steps. I'll take another half mil. Um, so that'll put us up to 43. And then we'll just measure it again. And then I'm going to shove it, you know, without changing that, I'm going to do another four passes on the same settings and we'll measure it again and we'll see what the difference is. It does take the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit off, but like I said, almost nothing. Right, let's put you somewhere clean. Uh, you can come out of the way now. start smack on the zero mark okay right I'm gonna do this measure it because I'm interested to see what's what <laughs> So we took a bit more out of it. Uh, I went a little bit more than half mil just so I could get the zero on the, the hash line there. Just, it makes it easier in my head. And we're short anyway, so that'll be fine. So we are now at 40, 1, 2, 3, 43.6. Five, six, 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 six. Yeah, forty-three point six, six. So, um, forty-three point six, six. So now I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to run it through again four more times. We have got that little line there. I have took a picture of it, so I'll show that to you. I'm going to run it through another sort of three or four times. Exactly the same settings. We'll see what happens to that little line. And we'll measure it again and see how much it is actually taking off. Because that's obviously going to be the tool deflection. Um, apparently sometimes it doesn't get rid of that line. Which you would have thought it would do. But I suppose if it's, you know, if the tool's got hot going through it, it's going to be a bit bigger when you pull it out. So, I don't know, maybe it don't. about to touch off. Let's give that a go. is a beautiful finish in there now um, first pass it did take a little bit more off next one tiny bit more the third and fourth ones basically I was just scraping WD-40 off I think the line has gone I will get another picture actually and just show you just you know 
Why wouldn't I? Uh, 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 uh. There is the faint, no it's not even that, is that the line? I can't tell. I'll have a look at the photos after they're done. But it is a lovely finish. So if we take a measurement now. Right. What did I say he was? 43.66. I'll make that 43.69. Yeah, 43.69. One, two, three, six, nine. Yeah, 43.69. So it does take a tiny bit off. You can see that because my lines basically disappeared. Burst is tool deflection. Um, what I think I'm probably going to do, I ain't going to show you, <laughs> but if, these, these micrometers aren't amazing, they only go down to two decimal places, but I figured, well you're starting out, <laughs> you don't need the extra decimal place. Um, but I'm, I'm getting quite good, it does take practice, it does take practice, um, and you have to, I'm still measuring things like, you know, several times, just feeling for it and everything else until I'm happy with the measurement that I've got. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to need the extra decimal place, but once I get to the point of noticing, then I'll consider getting a set. In the meanwhile, one one hundredth of a millimetre is probably good enough for me, I think. <laughs> right, I've just been up and down it a few more times. And that is coming in forty five point oh nine. I'm calling that forty five point one. <laughs> right. Um I suppose I should let me just I just want to measure the fault leg and make sure they really are forty five on the money. And if that's the case, I'll have him out of there, deburr him, and we'll see if he fits on the bike. All right. Now he's coming up a tiny bit under, so this should go on. It should go on. It should fit. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, because I can always, you know, locate that hole and do the same sort of thing again, but I'm going to have all this out. We'll offer it up to the bike. I ain't going to be able to get the whole thing to fix, obviously I ain't done none, but I do want to make sure that that one goes on. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, let's um, pull this off. I'll have to locate that hole anyway. So that's fine. Genuinely, this is first time trying to fit it. <laughs> you can tell that because it's all still covered in ground. <laughs> Right, where's my deep bearing thing? Ugh. Inside. does leave a lovely finish. Right, um, I'm going to fit that way without hitting anything. Yes! 
And that is a lovely snug fit. Tiny, tiny bit of wiggle room. That'll do. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's get the other one done. This is what's commonly known as the oh my god moment. <laughs> oh, please fit, please fit, please fit. It's either going to be, oh my god, it fits, or it's going to be, oh my god, what have I done wrong? <laughs> Believe in something and it will happen. I am liking this because the way I've done it is I wanted the, uh, the, the the holes for the forks just to go up into that radius and they do on both sides and they just touch the top of where I've had the radius cut so it kind of like that just a little bit it is cool right, please fit please fit please fit please fit please fit please fit, please fit. oh you're cockeyed don't you if it fits, it's going to be bloody snug. Oh, it does. It does. He's on. God, that is snug. Um, and the hole in the middle lines up. See, I don't want to tap it down. Just because I'm going to have to tap it off again. Um, till I slit it, the, there is no giving it, but that is about as snug as it's going to get. You have to wiggle it on. Should I open them up a little bit? No. No. Not going to. Because I don't want to stress these bits when it clamps down. Oh, I'm happy with that. Well, I'm well happy with that. Right, what's next? Um, right, these angles. Right, I'm having a bit of a senior moment. <laughs> See, according to my drawings here, if I was to turn that that way, a difference of angle between there and there, this, you know, this angle here basically should be 18.83 degrees for it to meet up nicely and give me a nice little radius at the top here. So that's fine. Um, the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm having two minds about how to set the thing up. When I did, when I used the um, the rotary table to tilt it around to do one of these radiuses on the inside, first one that I did, had it all lined up, dialed it all in, it was spot on on here, but I think because there's backlash in the lead screw and all that sort of stuff, it didn't come in absolutely perfect, and I've not remade the nut on this yet. Um, that's gonna have to wait for a little bit. Um, once it's set, doesn't move at all. It is brilliant. It's the setting of it that I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit over. <laughs> so, I haven't got any metal stock, but Steve-O did give me some chunks of Delrin, which is basically a hard machinable plastic. Um, I think they use it for making like crash bobbins and you know stuff like that, basically. Um, it is pretty tough stuff. Um, and I'm thinking I could use it to make some locating pegs. So what I'm thinking of doing is machining one that fits exactly in this hole, you know, on this one for the fork tube. And then I'll machine another one that fits exactly in here, comes out to the dimension that I want. So I want to put like, I want to keep that distance as big as I can, but I want to keep this distance to five mil. So it's the same as the front. But I could machine pegs up to go in here. I could put something like this across the top of it and clamp it. Uh, so it's clamped to it rather. Or something, I don't know. I'll just find a piece of something. And then I could indicate off that. So once I've got that absolutely set and straight where I wanted it, you know, I could mark it up as to exactly where I want the cut to, to, to 
end so I've got five mil there and I'll be measuring it anyway but that just means I could clamp it straight down to the bed of the table at the correct angle and just go chomping along and not have to worry about setting any angles on this I can just indicate it because while I've indicated these they've just come up spot on absolutely spot on so essentially we're going to be coming along there taking off this shoulder getting wider and then sort of straight along there and I'll be able to use exactly the same peg well, well probably exactly the same peg yeah, I could do because I could put a hole that size through that peg that goes in there so I could centralize it on the rotary table just to do my radius around here and I've got that peg which goes in this hole anyway so I could centralize it to do that radius there so I reckon that's how I'm going to do it I reckon I can't think of a better way in fact I can't really think of another way <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, let's do that then. Boys are in the right state again. Right, I made me stuff. Let me show you how I'm hoping, hoping this is gonna work. Right, right, so that's my original peg. I've just made a slightly longer one. It's the same dimensions either side. So he should, come on. He goes in like that. He's nice and steady. Um, then I can shove my yokes on. Like that. Um, the bit of Delrin, I've faced off one side just so it sits flat. Don't really care about the top because it's only an indicator. There is a little bit of slop in this, but not much. So it can go in there, and then my original peg can go in here. Like that. So I've now got a couple of choices. I could get, I don't know, a piece of stock or something. I'll probably use a parallel if it'll go. Uh, I could have something that goes like that. Um, clamp it to both of these pegs with a little uh, machinist clamps that I've got. And that way I can indicate across this face on the parallel. Um, and if, I, you know, if I'm out, I can just rotate the table until I get it right. Just keep sweeping it and indicating it so I know I've got it absolutely cock on um, and then I can lock this off and he ain't going anywhere and I know I will hit that line so I'll just get something for I don't know how thick this is it looks like five mil could well be five mil um, but I just need something that I can indicate across there the other option I've got is I was gonna um, do a center point center line on here and um, just mark the middle and then do five mil off this um, to that center point. Um, Cause that way when I come to do that radius, um, you know, I can get it all to, to follow the curvature of that, that stem hole sort of thing. So that, that was that idea anyway. Um, the other thing is when I do come to do this radius across here, let's just get him out of the way, pull him out. So my peg in there, it's got a 10 mil hole in it. So I could shove this in a collet Come on. So I can find that hole. And then again, I can just use the rotary table, you know, to do that radius across there between the two angles, which I reckon would be quite good. Um, it just means if I take this out for any reason or change setups or anything else, I've just got a quick and easy way of setting it up again. But that could be handy. Right, so that's the plan. It's going to work. 
Well, wouldn't it work? The other thing that I can do is I'm probably going to shove a 22mm hole through the middle of this. Just so that can go over my peg and then this can go over top of that. That way I can do the radius in here. Um, which would be quite cool. And it means I can mount it either way up to get to whatever I want to put a curve into, basically. So it is going to work. There are a couple of holes that is going to need to be done. I might shove a 10mm hole through this just so I can sit the two pegs together and locate it with my me, um, me steel just so I can extend it if I need to, because I'm going to need to get stuff underneath this yoke to raise it up to machine all the sides. So there is a little bit of monkeying about to do. <laughs> However, it is going to have to wait because I need to chip off to me work. Um, we are definitely going on holiday start of October. So I'm putting in some overtime to pay for it, but I am definitely, definitely going to be giving it a week of laying like that next to a pool going, get me another beer. I'm all inclusive. <laughs> So that's where I'm leaving it today, folks. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe. I'm loving all the comments from the machinists as well, just chipping in with little ideas and that, so keep them coming. But I will see you on the next one. Laters!